Hey, it's Sam here from SRA Solder. I thought it would be fun to do a follow-up to our last video by sharing some of my personal favorite soldering tools with you. And just in case you missed the last update, we announced plans to create some great soldering kits for different applications and the release of our soldering guide that you can download for free at the link in the description. So be sure to stick around for my top 10 favorite soldering tools. So let's get right into it. Now these are all things I actually use for my projects, which are for the most part musical equipment repair and modification. I'll kick it off with a tool that I use for every single job, which is my pair of long needle nose pliers. Now these ones have serrated jaws, which are key because they grip onto the wires and leads much better than a smooth jaw plier does, giving superior control. This particular pair is from Snap-on, and it's my favorite because it can reach pretty far into the chassis to get wires and other small parts. I also have a pair of ESD grip pliers from Zuron, which have shorter jaws that are excellent for precise lead forming. Up next is another tool that's great for poking around in equipment chassis. It's a simple plastic non-conductive spudger. But the coolest part about it is the little notch here that can grip onto wires. This can be helpful when you've got a wire somewhere you can't reach, like deep in a chassis, or when you're soldering and need to hold the wire in place to prevent movement and reduce the chance of a cold solder joint. Now, speaking of cold solder joints, the main cause of a bad solder joint is movement of the component or board while solder is still in its molten state. If this is happening to you, then you'll most likely benefit from this next tool, which is a good set of helping hands. This is the most common you'll find, which has two alligator clips on each side to hold the components and workpiece. There are a lot of different types out there, and I suggest trying a variety to see what works for you in your application. In some cases, even a piece of cardboard can provide a relatively sturdy jig while soldering. If you do have one of these kinds, though, I suggest using heat shrink tubing on the clips to protect your wires from the sharp jaws. Now, along with movement, the second biggest cause of bad solder joints is poor soldering iron tip maintenance. It is absolutely critical to keep your tip clean and tinned with fresh solder after each use. In addition to the standard sponge you get with most solder stations, I like to use a brass coil cleaner. One of the advantages of these cleaners is that it does not shock the iron and drop the tip temperature drastically allowing you to quickly clean the tip and continue working. Now, this is a great option to help you prolong the life of your tips, but I find when the tips get heavy with flux residue, I prefer hitting it with a sponge before returning it to the holder. If you do happen to get a bad solder joint or component while soldering, the good news is that you can just reflow the joint and replace it. The bad news though is that removing the old part can be tricky at times. You run the risk of damaging the component and pads on the board by spending too much time on it with your iron trying to get it off. The two most common tools for desoldering are the desoldering pump and the solder wick, which both work well but you still need to provide a heat source and it can be hard to juggle both tools at the same time. The desoldering pump can remove a lot of solder at once but it quickly gets clogged and must be reloaded manually. A desoldering gun solves both of these problems though by heating the joint and sucking out the solder with one tool. When I have a lot of solder joints to clean, like on an IC or a row of transistors, this tool is an absolute lifesaver and a time saver. Whenever I do soldering work, I try to take every precaution I can to stay safe. In addition to protective glasses and gloves, one of the best investments I've made for my setup and my health is a fume extractor. Now these devices effectively redirect soldering fumes away from your face and filter out the toxins to keep your air cleaner. Many people think that solder fumes can contain lead, but this is not true as the lead does not vaporize at soldering temperatures. It's actually the flux core in the wire that smokes when heated. But it still should not be breathed in. So proper ventilation is important no matter where you're working. And this unit actually allows me to work in a part of my basement that doesn't have any windows, and I couldn't imagine being without it. A big portion of the soldering jobs I do includes making my own cables and wiring up things like guitar pedals and pro audio gear. In order to do this, I rely on my trusty wire strippers. I prefer the plain old manual type that can accommodate a wide range of wire gauges. I have several of the type with specific gauges marked, but I've just gotten used to these and I find them easier and faster to use. They become much more forgiving when they have dulled a bit, which helps a lot too. 
The one caveat would be when I'm trying to strip a larger gauge wire like the kind I use for instrument cables. For this, I love the simple finger wire strippers. Now, this guy uses pressure to fit around the cable with a short blade, and all you do is spin it around the cable with your finger until it's totally scored and the sheath can be removed with your fingers. Sometimes though, neither of these work very well, like when you're shortening a power cable. In this case, I prefer to use a precision utility knife to score down and around the sheath. This is really one of those indispensable tools that's great for a variety of purposes. I use mine a lot for removing old heat shrink tubing, tape, and other adhesive materials. And as with the wire strippers, they can benefit from a little dullness. This makes it easier to cut through the sheath only and not damage the wires inside. Now, while this next one is not technically a tool, I believe having some good part spins handy while soldering is an absolute must. Whether you're disassembling or assembling, you'll want to keep track of all the parts as you go. And it's good to have a variety of sizes to accommodate different kinds of parts. I'm also a big fan of using cardboard to hold screws and other hardware. I simply poke them through and make a note of where they go. It's always a great idea to take pictures on your phone or digital camera too as a backup to remind you how everything fits together later. And last but certainly not least, we have a tool that I just recently started using, which would be these hot micro tweezers. Similar to a desoldering gun, it's essentially two tools in one. I can heat up both sides of a component to solder or desolder and pull it right off the board in one swift motion. For SMD rework, it makes short time in removing small resistor and capacitor packages. They can be great for stubborn through hole parts too. Well that's my top 10. I hope you found this video interesting and I'd love to hear what your favorite soldering tools are. Do we share any on this list? Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to help us create more soldering content like this. And check out our soldering guide, which I've linked below. I promise it will help you create successful soldering joints. Until next time, thanks for watching.